Hi, my name's David and this is Revelation, my small 27 foot wooden home. We left England and it's cold grey seas to circumnavigate the world single-handed. An experience sailing that was exhilarating, fast, slow, rolly, with dolphins, with others, with sailing and mesmerizing sunsets. To find anchorages that were sunny, picturesque, quiet, blustery, and simply sensational. So join me in Revelation as we attempt to sail around the world. So, late last night, Taravecchia. Sorry about the sun in your face, but this is the entrance to it. There's a marina over in the distance there. Wow, oh, windy, okay. So I uh, got in late last night went onto the waiting pontoon and then in the morning went round to marina office hall, checked in, got shown to my berth, moved my boat. So it's all settled in and safe there now. I got a great night's sleep. I mean, it's just beautiful. Really, really, still water um, and in the morning you could just hear uh, uh, the odd voice at first I had to wear my mask when checking in the uh, Spanish as the French do um, insist on you wearing your mask so that's pretty compulsory too Then as the uh, morning went on, um, more people turned up at the marina, French vo voices, uh, English voices, the sound of a, what sounded like a dentistry, but people just working on their boats uh, and generally just enjoying the sunshine. I had a couple of things I desperately needed to do. One was laundry. I was just out of clothes, so it was so good to be able to just get them all washed. And uh, my starboard cross tree was uh, starting to wobble a little bit too much for me, so I needed to just, just uh, get my Prusik knots in order and get up the mast and uh, just retighten those. And it also gave me a good view of where I was going to be for um, a few more months. But I was still keen to uh, get over to uh, the Balearics. It was still, well, later on in the season, but uh, still plenty of time. So fix the cross trees, sort my laundry, and then um, leave. had a look around the marina it looked pretty good shower block was all good at the end of my pontoon so easy access uh, went into the town got some more provisions came back to the boat had another good night's sleep looked at the chart and thought right Ibiza let's go
uh, all took down in Torovagia, so I have sailed up to the Balearics. This is Formentera, or actually this is the island of um, Espamalda, uh, and then Formentera starts just after it. Uh, so this is the first anchorage since I've left where you've got clear blue sky, nice bright hot sun, uh, crystal clear tap water, it's a bit scary dropping your anchor because you can see there's only about eight feet below you. Uh, over in the distance there is uh, Ibiza. Uh, so I'm going to sail around. I'm going to sail around uh, Formentera a couple of days, and then I am going to head up to uh, Ibiza. Kind of circumnavigate that. There's enough colours of fog down seven or eight. So you have the inevitable couple of pints of uh, lager and the inevitable lunch or supper, not cooked by itself and not including any fish. So the yeah, Iceland anchored here, a bit of a easterly wind picked up, cool you down. So I shall go to the beach. It's a nature reserve, so you can't go past uh, the poles about 10, 15 meters back. Um, but yeah, so first of a two or three week little trip out around uh, the Balearics. So this is all the uh, colours that you have. You have these huge cliffs and the colour I'm going to is you can't even see the entrance there it just looks like a straight cliff wall but um, it's somewhere in there. But it is, it's, uh, the water changes colour. There's this really deep blue. These wonderful cliffs up here. Volcanic vomit to make all this with a few little trees on, and that's pretty much it. I'll be going just into there in about half an hour. Calipotics all. So uh, the wind changed direction instead of going where I was going to go. I uh, headed to this little, what they call as a horseshoe bay, but that's the opening. I mean, it's really, really, really narrow. And the whole bay, tiny as it is, has these wonderful cliffs all the way around. All the way around, a couple of little beaches there. The sun's gone in now because the cliffs are really tall. And then they have these little fishermen's huts, which end up being uh, built by the locals and turned into like beach huts. And they all come down and, I mean, what a fabulous little bay for this to be in. I mean, it's, uh, as you say, it's pretty close to the rocks and it's weed and weed, sand and rocks on the bottom so it's not brilliant holding but um, yeah it's too good it's a little uh, serendipitous discovery uh, and this is where we're going to spend the night so yeah there you go came in last night a couple of boats in but they've left fantastic overnight Tiny little horseshoe bay, very small entrance, you can't even really see it until you ride on it. But yeah, so yeah, fantastic uh, serendipitous discovery. So, how about this for an anchorage? Tiny, tiny little horseshoe bay. Vitamins cottages there, which the the users uh, little beach huts now. And there you go. Came in last night. A couple of boats in, but they've left. 
fantastic overnight tiny little horseshoe bay very small entrance you can't even really see it until you ride on it but yeah so yeah fantastic uh So I sailed around Ibiza for another couple of weeks, Calatarida, Calabasa, went into San Antonio the Marina, um, um, Portinach, beautiful colors for sure. but. With COVID, everything was um, starting to close. And by the first couple of weeks in September, it was cloudy, it was colder at night, so beaches were emptying out. So I thought, well, head back to the marina. But plans to sail down to Canary Islands, Cape Verde in September, October, November for an Atlantic crossing. Um, most people I was talking to and saying nobody really knows about sailing into the Caribbean with COVID. It seemed like a long way to go to be <laughs> told it was closed. So I headed back to the marina had survived um, strong winds and fog all the way down from England. My log read 2,145 miles. <laughs> survived all that, so it was a question of um, how do you best survive a marina winter? Well, with memories of the fabulous bays around Ibiza is certainly going to help. Until I get back in a new year. <laughs>